Hi, I'm Lee King, Macro and Technical Desk Analyst at Barclays Capital. And today we're going to be talking about technical tools, major price patterns. So what we're going to be discussing, two major types of price patterns, uh, as well as tactical considerations around uh, trading them and what some of the implications are. Uh, so the two types of price patterns, continuation patterns and reversal patterns. Uh, and then how to look at you know when we actually confirmed a break or completed a pattern, and what the measured moves are going to be. So first major type of price pattern is continuation. Continuation patterns are basically consolidations that are likely to give way to resumption of the trend. Uh, so here what we saw was you know the S and P from 2003 to about 2007. Um, it was already in an uptrend. Then you see let's say two months sideways. Trend, you know, isn't reversing. It breaks out and then continues that uptrend, All right? For another, this was maybe eight months. You see another consolidation for six or eight months. Breaks out, continues the preceding trend. Consolidate, break out, continues the preceding trend. Consolidate, break out, continues the preceding trend. So those continuation patterns uh, are all over the place on every security known to man, uh, and that's one of the things that we're going to be looking for. Uh, there are several different types of continuation patterns. So among the major types of continuation patterns are rectangles, triangles, uh, a wedge, and a flag or pennant. Uh, the typical volume pattern within consolidation is usually you'll see high volume in the directional move that precedes the consolidation. Uh, then dramatic declines uh, in volume during that actual consolidation, uh, as you see fewer and fewer people actually trading uh, as it's trading sideways. And then you'll see volume pick up again uh, as you exit the continuation pattern and resume the, that preceding trend. Uh, so going through those four types that, that we talked about, uh, rectangle, basically you're looking at at least one, two highs uh, and at least one, two lows. Uh, it's going to be roughly parallel uh, in a sideways trend. So in this case, we're in an uptrend. You're trading sideways, one, two highs, two lows uh, around the same area, uh, and then breaks out through those highs, and you're now talking about a continuation uh, of the preceding trend. Uh, triangle, you're still looking about at least two highs and two lows, uh, but now the highs and the lows are approaching each other. Uh, so in this case, you're seeing slightly lower highs, you're seeing slightly higher lows. As long as there are different kinds of triangles, but in each case, the highs and the lows are approaching each other. So these two trend lines are approaching each other. Uh, so you look at an uptrend, you know, this consolidation, and again, on a consolidation, usually you'd be seeing volume decreasing uh, consistently throughout this pattern, uh, and then a breakout and continuation of the preceding move. Uh, a wedge, here is somewhat similar to uh, a triangle, in, in a manner of speaking. Uh, but here you're looking at at least three highs uh, and three lows, uh, still approaching each other, uh, but the entire move tends to have uh, a bias uh, counter to the prior direction. So in this case, we had been headed higher. You're now looking at one, two, three highs, three lows, uh, and the entire move is heading uh, a bit lower. And then once you've broken out, you're continuing the preceding move. Then a flag also, sharp directional move, uh, small low volume consolidation, and then a high volume breakout and continuation here. Yeah, so here also you should be looking at uh, you know, much lower volume here. One of the big issues with a flag is normally these are shorter term uh, events. Uh, rectangles, triangles, wedge, these things can take place over weeks, over months, over years, uh, or even decades. Uh, whereas a flag normally is going to take place you know, over days or weeks. It's going to be pretty rare to see a flag that lasts more than a few months. So the other major price pattern is uh, reversals. So there have been three major reversal patterns in the past decade on the, the broader market. You, know, you basically had a bear market from 2000 to 2002, uh, bottomed, you know, and then 
completed that reversal pattern here in the middle of 2003, which basically implied we're now looking at a change in trend and the major trend is now higher. Right? We had an uptrend, higher highs, higher lows, uh, all the way up into 2007, at uh, which point you complete a reversal pattern in early 2008, and that's now saying we've confirmed you know, the major trend should now be lower. Lower lows, lower highs, and the same thing uh, for this reversal pattern here uh, down in uh, early 2009. Different types of reversal patterns. Um, the major reversal patterns, uh, we're looking at head and shoulders, uh, double or triple tops or bottoms, uh, a rounding top or bottom, uh, island reversals, and uh, a one bar or one day, one week, doesn't matter what it is, but one bar reversal, uh, which in candlesticks would you know, often be referred to as like a, a hammer type pattern. Uh, the typical volume pattern for reversals, uh, it will go through one by one because uh, unlike consolidations, it varies a little bit. So head and shoulders. Uh, this is just taking a quick look at a uh, you know, head and shoulders pattern in Walmart. Uh, once confirmed, and you know, head and shoulders is one of the more popular reversal patterns as, as well. And it's popular because you know, once confirmed, it tends to be one of the more reliable uh, reversal patterns, you know, i.e., more than most other reversal patterns tend to continue to uh, you know, move and have the implications that you would expect uh, a greater percentage of the time. Uh, so what we see here in the head and shoulders is you can get a left shoulder, uh, which basically a move down and you know, out of, if we start in a downtrend, you get a move down and a quick retracement here. Uh, you then had a continuation and a move to a deeper low, rebounding back up. And then one more slight move lower, uh, and a move back up through what we refer to as the neckline, you know, which is basically if we connect, you know, what on a bottom would be the high points of the left shoulder and the right shoulder, you know, that forms a neckline, and that's what we look to be broken uh, for confirmation of a completed pattern. Uh, so for here, we've got the left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder. Volume pattern is heavy volume on the left shoulder and often on the head as well, so just anywhere in here, uh, and then lighter volume on the first leg of the right shoulder uh, and a pickup once you've broken out. Uh, rounded bottom. Uh, so this one is usually a longer term pattern. Uh, this is just a quick chart of, uh, of GE. And what you see here is a move heads down relatively sharply but then starts taking much longer periods of time to get to lower lows and lower lows, yeah, and then finally higher lows and higher lows, right? And you look for the reverse and around the top, you know, it, quick sharp move up, and then taking much longer period of time to get to higher highs, finally reversing and rolling over and getting slightly lower highs, uh, but not in a hurry to do so, right? And normally, what you'll get in terms of a volume pattern is the volume is mirroring price, i.e. you get uh, a lot of volume on the, the sharp entry into the rounded bottom. Uh, and then declining volume over time as price declines and the volume starting to pick up as you know, what basically is effectively happening is investor interest in the name is picking up. More people are starting to trade it. Uh, and then finally getting confirmation with a, a higher volume move out of that rounded bottom. Uh, a double bottom is a, another uh, form, another popular reversal pattern. Uh, in 2008, 2009, with a double bottom in Target, uh, basically all we're looking for here is you know, a sharp move down to a low, reverse, uh, usually a sharp reversal out of that low, uh, then another follow-up move down to about the same level, and reversing up out of that as well. Now the double bottom, or alternatively a double top, does not get confirmed until you've actually exceeded or broken out through this middle point, i.e. you had the first bottom, you came up to this midpoint, and then the second bottom, and once you exceed that you know, middle point, now you're getting basically confirmation that the reversal pattern uh, has completed. Uh, the volume pattern for a double bottom, we're looking at heavy volume, on the first move down, and we want to see much lighter volume on the second move down, on that retest of the low.
So uh, two more, an island top uh, or bottom. Uh, AMD, this is one example, and AMD had an island top uh, back in 2005 or 2004 uh, with a gap around 19. Right? So island top, all you're looking for is a move higher, a gap up. You know, say at a gap basically around this 19 price point, uh, a move into a high, yeah, and whatever the trading pattern is up here, it doesn't matter that much. Um, in this case, it kind of trades out a bit of a head and shoulders, uh, but that isn't as crucial as the fact that you're holding above that gap at 19. Uh, and then finally, gap back down through the same level, right? So there's basically air. There's a vacuum here at 19. Yeah, and so gapping back down through that 19 level uh, on heavy volume. So that normally is what we're looking for in an island top or an island bottom. You know, big volume on a gap up, uh, continue to trade above that level, uh, and then big volume on a gap down. Yeah, and that completes the island top. Uh, one day reversal as well. Uh, here, basically, uh, what's required first is that you be in an uptrend or in a downtrend. You're in an established trend. Uh, in this case, we're looking at Microsoft. You get a large range after the uptrend um, on one day, pushed up you know, probably an extra dollar or two in there, uh, and then came all the way back down. Right. So you're in an uptrend. You open here, push all the way up. And come all the way back down, uh, or most of the way back down, um, within one day on very very heavy volume, right? And then continue down, right? So what we're looking for uptrend, uh, basically a high that's much for a top, a high that's much higher than your open and your close, and the open and close near each other, you know, on very very heavy volume. And then what we like to see for confirmation is. You know, a slight continuation of that move uh, the following one or two days, you know, and that tends to mark reversal points. You know, in this case, the volume was the heaviest that uh, Microsoft had seen in over six months, and did a great job of marking a, a short to intermediate term high point. Uh, confirming a break on a completed pattern. Uh, there's a couple of things that we look for in terms of confirmation. One is volume. Uh, it's always preferable that you get heavy volume on completion of a pattern, whether that's the break of a neckline head and shoulders, or the break of that midpoint in a double top or a double bottom, uh, or what have you. Um, but volume does not necessarily have to be there for downside breakouts, um, but must always be there for upside breakouts. Then a second kind of rule of thumb uh, that tends to be used uh, relatively often is you know, 3 percent uh, or 3 days away. And what that means is that if there's a point which would serve as a breakout that you push if you're trading you know, for short or intermediate term time frame or longer, you know, that you move 3 percent through that breakout point, uh, or that you move through the breakout point and you spend, even if it's only 2 percent, you spend 3 days without touching the actual breakout point, and that as being confirmation that you've really broken through. So measured moves, whether it's a continuation pattern or a reversal pattern, one good guideline is the measured move is about the magnitude of the largest part of the pattern, you know, and then that added or subtracted uh, to the breakout point. So often we'll also see a pause after a reflection of the smaller part of the pattern. Uh, so look at a quick example in terms of a head and shoulders. Uh, sometimes we'll see the first move down just being the magnitude of one of the shoulders, and then a retracement, and then we'll finally see the rest of that move to reflect you know, the entire magnitude of the head or the, the larger pattern. Uh, and then we'll also take a look at the, the dollar versus percent question. One of the, the keys on something like, let's say, a head and shoulders or a major rectangle, you get a breakout. Um, are we looking at the magnitude of the move in terms of percent, or are we looking at the magnitude in terms of actual dollars? So let's say you had a, uh, something trading in a range uh, in a rectangle from $30 to $40, right? Was well, that a $10 move? So a breakout should take you from 40 to 50, or is it a 30% move 
to the breakout through 40 should actually take you to 52. Um, usually, we're going to get uh, that measured move uh, actually taking you a full percent, uh, but it's good to also watch the, the dollar move as well. Uh, but, but normally, we're going to get a completion of that measured move in terms of percents. Um, so here's just a couple of quick examples. You know, looking at uh, the typical measured move uh, or implication for completing consolidation, uh, this continuation, whether it's rectangles, triangles, uh, those types of patterns, you know, we see a move into it, this continuation pattern, and then once you break out, this magnitude that marks the high and low of the pattern, we're usually seeing is the, the implication or implied move once you've broken out of the pattern. Um, flags are not included this in this, and we'll address it in a second. Uh, and then reversals, head and shoulders, double or triple tops, rounded tops, or you know, islands, those types of things. You know, let's say here we've got this reversal pattern. Uh, it's larger magnitude here. We get a break. Uh, and then here we get what, in terms of the larger pattern, should be you know, basically completing that magnitude just on the, the other side of the break. Flags, I mentioned, were different. Uh, flags and pennants are different in that the measured move is essentially a swing target, i.e., it's not the size of the consolidation. It's actually the size of the preceding move. Uh, it's one of the reasons why, especially some shorter-term traders, really like these moves is they often tend to be quite powerful. And if you can identify them, uh, you can often get some very, very dramatic gains in a short period of time. Uh, so in this case, you had a big move into the flag, uh, what would be effectively the, the pole of the flag, was much, much larger than the consolidation itself. You had a consolidation, which again, if we were looking at the volume, would be much, much, much lower volume than a breakout here. And that measured or implied move would be the same magnitude, but measured on the other side from this low. So that about covers it. Uh, this concludes the segment on major price patterns. For the Market Technicians Association, I'm Malik King, Macro and Technical Desk Analyst at Barclays Capital. Thank you for joining us today.